Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent, and they could not answer him regarding these things. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor, is it lawful to skip church and watch the Packers play in London? One quote-unquote Lutheran congregation in Economawak, their answer was in a broadcast that was shared in clips virally this week on social media. Their answer was, how about both? So they offered a quick service of the word this morning during pregame, and then the sacrament of the tailgate in their fellowship hall during halftime. The pastors even suggested to the host that they could offer prayers during the game that God would give victory over the ungodly Nephilim of New York. Perhaps our Daniel would slay them with his strong arm and his smooth, stitched pigskin. I imagine that most of the viewers who saw the clip and shared it found this congregation's approach amusing and clever. Along with the green and gold of Trinity season on the altar and pastor, the congregants in this video were encouraged to wear matching jerseys. Why can't we both love God and love our beloved team at the same time? Perhaps we should have, we should have taken a survey this morning and asked maybe to delay God's service to the evening or devise some kind of clever scheme like that church up north, or perhaps just cancel altogether and come back another day. Of course, based on the Facebook shares and comments, the ones I saw were by pastors and lay people alike, they saw the question as beyond the pale. To put the divine service in competition with the game of the week is misplaced. There are only brief temporary consequences to what happens at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium today. The day's events will soon be forgotten, even as memorable as they might be. Whereas the divine service offers lasting promises and delivers eternal gifts, not so quickly lost or forgotten. This question will come up again when you're faced in a few months with the choice of receiving Christ's gifts in divine service on Christmas Day, which happens to fall on a Sunday this year, or instead to spend time with your family or celebrate the day by some other means. And this question is implicit, actually, in your mind often, in all the mundane Sundays, where the choice is less significant. It's your day off, you're tired, the cows need milking, the harvest needs to come in, family is in town, doesn't matter. You see, the question of the Sabbath is still just as relevant today as it was in the house of one of those rulers of the Pharisees some 2,000 years ago. From Jesus, the problem is that you neither believe him nor do you understand the gift that he has given you in the Sabbath. On that day, even the most skilled experts in God's Word, those scribes and Pharisees, they didn't have it straight. The prophets had been telling them for millennia, and they still didn't understand. They can't seem to get the priority straight. Their problem isn't, of course, omitting the divine service, but rather maybe adding additional laws, hundreds of them, to govern their conduct on the Sabbath day. So, With them and with us, Jesus repeatedly catechizes with word and deed. Today's gospel was in Luke chapter 14, but if you go back to chapter 6 in the same gospel, Jesus and his disciples there first got themselves in trouble regards to the Sabbath. They were walking through the grain fields on the Sabbath day, and being hungry, they picked grains of that wheat to eat, rubbing it between their fingers to get the hull off. The Pharisees seeing it, were aghast. That's not lawful, according to their rules. But Jesus reminded them how David and his soldiers did something far more dramatic. They went into the temple and took of the showbread, which was reserved for the Levitical priests, and they ate of it because of their hunger. Also forbidden, and there by Levitical law explicitly. But in response, Jesus said, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. It's his Sabbath, after all. And then, on another Sabbath, in the same chapter, 
While Jesus taught in the synagogue, he took to heal a man with a withered hand as he was teaching. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy, he asked them. And then he healed the man, and the Pharisees there were filled with rage at, again, this gross violation of the rules which were set up. And again, in chapter 13, just right one chapter before our gospel today, while Jesus was teaching, there a woman who was held in an infirmity, a captivity that had her hunched over, well, he released her from the captivity and healed her of the infirmity. Again, a ruler of the synagogue was outraged and exclaimed, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. But Jesus brought not only this ruler of the synagogue, but the Pharisees and scribes there to shame, pointing out their hypocrisy. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? That's all the lead up to today. Having been put in their place and rightly ashamed by Jesus, one of the rulers of the Pharisees now sets Jesus up. Jesus was invited, and as Luke says, they're all watching him closely as a man disfigured with edema is brought before them. What will Jesus do? They think they have him cornered. Will he slip up and violate the law of Moses this time in such a way that they can finally accuse him of blasphemy and put him to death? Will Jesus finally give them some cause to get him out of the picture? But of course, Jesus, knowing their hearts, sees right through the ruse. And he, Jesus answering, that is, answering their action of putting the man with edema in front of him, spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Again, is it lawful? His catechesis is working, because this time they don't even answer. They dare not answer, and they're silent. Why? Because, again, they know they have no excuse. This man is in pain and suffering. He needs mercy and healing not to be excluded, not to be neglected, not to be sent away. And so Jesus took him and healed him and then let him go. Like any reasonable man would rescue his own son or ox that has fallen into a pit, Jesus saves this man plagued by this sickness, this disfiguring edema on a Sabbath day. What a gift. You'll notice the common question that is repeated in all of the exchanges, the four I gave you from Luke's Gospel, they keep asking, is it lawful? And that's the essential question to consider as you decide whether to attend divine service or not. As it's explicitly confessed in the third word, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. How do we as Christians deal with this law? And in what way is it kept? According to Jesus, both in his actions and in his teaching, all human and divine laws dealing with, are dealing with outward works, and they are no more binding than love demands. According to Jesus, love is the exposition of the law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. On, all, on this, all the commandments hang, he says. In other words, without love, the law, even the law of the Sabbath, is worthless. And worse than that, the law where love is wanting becomes something ugly and gross, tyrannical, oppressive, and injurious, as the Pharisees and scribes and even Jews to this day use the Sabbath. It doesn't matter if the law is explicit in God's word or that law is a tradition of culture or church. Or it's a law developed by philosophers and politicians. Without love, love for neighbor, or where that love is wanting, the law is worthless. They should have known better, these Pharisees and scribes. Paul tells us 
who was a Pharisee of Pharisees, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And the Apostle Paul is not unique. Since Moses, God has been giving his people prophets who explain the law, not according to strictness, thou shalt and thou shalt not, but according to love for neighbor. When you serve your neighbor and God, you have kept the Sabbath right and well, even though you did work on it. Of course, that's obvious. Look at what Jesus does on Sabbath days. He teaches, he preaches, he heals, he even eats and drinks. But why is this true? Why is the Sabbath given for love for neighbor? Because love for neighbor is the work that God the Holy Spirit works through his word. This is the purpose of the Sabbath, that you hear God's word and, by God's giving, then live according to it in love for one another. Without God's word, you would neither know God nor would you even know how to love your neighbor. Therefore, God puts his word into your ears, not just today, but every day, so that your whole life will be lived in faith toward God and love for one another. Of course, since we are flesh and blood, it is best for us that we set aside one day, restraining the flesh with all of its distractions and desires and football games, to gather together in faith to listen to Jesus and receive mercy, grace, and love in his blood-bought forgiveness for us. So I suppose you're still waiting for my explicit judgment on whether it's lawful to watch the football game today or not. Well, actually, that's not really what today's text about the Sabbath is about Elsewhere, Jesus deals with those who make excuses, who were once invited but then avoid the wedding feast of the Lamb, which has no end. You'll get another sermon, or more than one, on the silliness of all of our reasons to avoid Jesus and listening to him. But today had more to do with the purpose of the Sabbath in its first place. Was it given for love or was it given for obedience? Is attending divine service an obedient act of love for God? Is it even a sacrifice of your real-time ability to watch a game? Is it lawful to stay home or not? It's really all the wrong question. Instead, let's go back to the beginning. Just as God rested on the seventh day from all his works that he had made, Genesis 2.2, 2, so he still desires you, your children, your workers, even your livestock, to rest and to pause on the seventh day. God is the Lord and maker of all creation. He knows your need and he well provides for them, even as you rest. He doesn't want or even need you to be worn out from all your constant labor. He does want you to rest your bodies and even let creation that he has given into your care rest just for a day. And to this, it doesn't matter what the law requires or even what your work ethic demands, because both the law and life must defer to love, even his loving care. That's the first purpose of the Sabbath. But there is also a famous passage from St. Augustine's Confessions in which he says, You, O God, have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. This ancient father confessed another and maybe chief reason for the Sabbath. It's for the receiving of Jesus' word. Without Jesus' word and his gifts given, your faith in God becomes starved, and thus your love for neighbor will also fail. This is why this question, is it lawful, is really the wrong question. The Sabbath was not made for you to obey and to keep in order to serve God, but rather because the Sabbath is God's day of love for you, for him to serve you. The Sabbath was given for you that you would be renewed and refreshed in your life, but also in faith and in love for one another. This refreshment comes to you in the proclamation of Christ crucified, for you, for the forgiveness of sins, and that forgiveness delivered to you 
in water and in word and in bread and wine. It's all a gift for you, from God to you. So instead of thinking of today as a day that you make sacrifices in order to be faithful to God, receive today as God's gift to you, a Sabbath day, a day of rest for you. Jesus comes to you, forgives you, restores you to holiness, renews your faith, enlivens you in his love, and inspires you to testify to others of Christ's love. And God, the Holy Spirit, will continue to use your voices, confessing, singing, consoling, encouraging, even uh, boldly proclaiming amen for for faith and for love for each other. May God give you such bold hearts and tongues. In Jesus' name, amen.